If you cannot find a scientist with Google Scholar, then that scientist is irrelevant. And obviously, a company without Google advertisements is on its way to bankruptcy. In this way, Google and its alikes are creating an entirely new reality. And that reality we will trust. After all, the power of open internet is that cheating is immediately punished. Google can only exist because it gives trustworthy results. It's exactly this kind of reasoning that blurs the lines between reality and virtuality. Take the analogy of car navigation systems such as TomTom. Tom. We trust it will show us the way. No need to bring a map. No need to, fi to figure out what the route will be in reality. But what if the system breaks down? Or what if it produces untrustworthy results? But of course, we've become very dependent on our ICT infrastructure. Dependability is king. If the system breaks down... No, 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 I'm not talking about dependability of the electronic infrastructure. We know how to deal with that, namely by building redundancy into the system. What I'm worried about is the quality of the re results being produced. Even if everything works fine, then still the results might be useless simply because the information cannot be trusted. Or you could be dealing with an untrusty avatar. Exactly. And the problem is, I will not be aware of that. I agree that the integrity of digital information and avatars seems very hard to verify. But there are ways to make virtual worlds, such as Second Life, as trustworthy as reality. Okay, well, let's hear an example. Well, um, Wikipedia is a mm -hmm. collaborative encyclopedia. Everyone can be an author, and more importantly, everyone can be an editor to correct information. Yes, yes, and, and everyone can insert falsified information. Weren't there some recent cases where government agencies were trying to adapt certain descriptions? Yeah, the fact that you know this shows how powerful internet collaboration can be in mm. revealing falsifications. Virtual communities or social networks such as Amazon, Friends and Hives are definitely means to identify and filter out untrustworthy information and individuals. Yeah, but these collaborative techniques are really far from perfect. Sure, a lot of work still needs to be done. I mean. TU Delft's Tribler software is one such initiative that uses peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer technology to implement social media. And a lot more research and innovation in this direction is already emerging in Europe. Yeah, that is true, that is true, but I'm still worried. For instance, what about my privacy in such digital collaborations? Uh, you have a good point there. Okay. Improving trustworthiness will require giving up the complete anonymity that we currently have on the Internet. For instance, your computer may have a, a biometric system based on facial features that always associates you with me, your avatar. Yeah, okay, I see, I see. So, in fact, information and communication technology has a completely new role to play here. I would say ICT-enabled trust in social networks. That is the way forward. That's an important road forward for virtuality. But nevertheless, I'm wondering how can we guarantee the trustworthiness of more elusive types of information, such as um, images and video. Everyone can Photoshop an image. As I said, everyone can Photoshop an image, creating on purpose distorted versions of reality. How do we recreate the trustworthy camera? A digital watermarking offers part of this answer. Mm -hmm. A watermark is a secret and invisible pattern embedded into an image or video. Using this pattern, it is easy to check at any time if the data has been manipulated. This forensic technique works like a uh, multimedia lie detector. A lie detector. Well, you know, lie detectors are notoriously unreliable. Agreed. And therefore, forensic techniques should be developed within the context of virtual communities. Mm -hmm. You see, I strongly believe in the combination of technology and the self-cleaning power of communities. Right, I see. And we should realize that virtual communities and social networks are on the rise in Internet. Eventually, we will all live in virtual worlds. Exactly. As a matter of fact, our university is researching advanced forms of man-computer interaction. These forms of interaction pave the way towards further removing the boundary between reality and virtuality. Interaction in virtual communities will be as natural as in reality. Yeah, which reminds me of a project uh, we carried out some time uh, ago here at uh, university. In this project, we tried to augment reality with virtual visual information. <laughs> you see, even you yourself 
are thinning the line. No, but we use this augmented reality scenario only as a technology driver for our proofs of concept. Technology driver? Proof of concept? That's pathetic. You Thank bunch you. of techies simply did not have the fantasy to see beyond the technological challenges. Okay. I'll make my point by showing you two clips. But uh, let me first make some room here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's a good idea if you explain to us what we see here. Okay, I'll do so. The purpose of that project that I was talking about was to investigate uh, technologies that can augment the real world with virtual objects, such as signs and buildings. It works as follows. First, we determine where a person is and what he or she is looking at in the real world. We do this making use of TomTom-like techniques and TomTom-like devices. Then a virtual object, in this clip a ball as you will see, is shown to the person on a wearable display. Through this transparent display, not only the virtual object is seen, but also the real world. In this way, augmented the reality with the artificially created object. The clip here shows you the view of the user. Um, what you see through the wearable display, we see a virtual ball bouncing off the real floor, the real walls, and actually in a real room. That's a pretty good merger of virtuality and reality, wasn't it? Hey. Uh, wow, this clip is such a piece of s s solid technology demonstration. So boring. The following clip shows how it should have been done. This is Hewlett Packard's vision of how in just a few years time, games will be played in augmented reality. Okay. Well, let's see. your playing field better get in the game isn't this a rather provoking glance into our future absolutely blending reality and virtuality absolutely I think we agree that virtuality must be taken seriously but at the same time I still believe that we do not yet sufficiently realize how rapidly we are becoming dependent on what goes on in virtuality and especially trustworthiness is an issue Technology is needed to guarantee a trustworthy virtue.